Hello everyone. I hope you are doing well. Soon summer will be ending, and it will be time for fall. Fall is a great time to focus on shu dao practice. So today we will talk about a shu dao topic. But first, let's get high on tea. Today's tea is a lao cha tou. A couple weeks ago, I introduced pu er tea. A very popular tea for the last、uh, two decades, though it has been less so recently due to many reasons. For example, the overpriced product through market manipulation has eventually hurt the product itself. I'm confident that the price of pure oil will keep decreasing in the future. As the pool air bubble is already beginning to burst. By the way, I enjoy pool air tea very much, which is why I hope people will learn to tell the difference between good pool air tea and simple overpriced pool air, and enjoy the good pool air. Anyway, let's focus on pool air tea itself for now. In my pool air introduction video. I mentioned the processing method of ripe pu er tea or shu pu er, the one that is artificially fermented in order to make it drinkable without going through a multiple year long fermentation process. The technology that is used to quickly ferment the raw pu er is called wu dui fa jiao ji shu. Or stacked fermentation technology. It is a modern technique to enhance microbial activity in pure leaf processing. Basically, it is the 45-day process that involves moistening large stacks of sun-dried raw tea leaves, piled high with regular and careful monitoring. So, during the stacking process, some leaves stick together and form a small block called lao cha tou or old tea head or tea nuggets. Normally, it counts for one percent of the total production volume of shu pu er. Tea manufacturers pick these small blocks out. And sell this byproduct separately. In the old days, these tea blocks would be sold to tea manufacturing workers at a very low price. However, about five years ago, the price of old tea head or lao cha tou increased all of a sudden once people noticed the strong pure flavor of this byproduct. For a while, lao cha tou used to be a lot more expensive than good pu er. So, lao cha tou is the result of the agglomeration of tea leaves during the stacked fermentation process of pu er tea. I have a couple of boxes of lao cha tou. Let me show you the leaves. Since the pectic substance in lao cha tou are richer than the rest of the non-agglomerated pu er leaves, the flavor of lao cha tou is very strong due to the fact that it is richer in content. And far more resistance to brewing, so lao cha tou is highly recommended to those who enjoy strong tea. Since lao cha tou is just ripe pu er in a different form, it has the same health benefits as ripe pu er tea. So people drink lao cha tou more for its stronger flavor than for specific health benefits. To brew lao cha tou, water at 
100 degrees Celsius for 10 seconds of brewing time is optimal. Try not to pour water directly on the tea in order to maintain a balanced flavor. After the third brew, you can add a few seconds for each subsequent brew. Very often, a good Lao Cha Tou can be brewed as many as uh, 20 times. This is the color of the tea decoction. You can see the decoction is uh, thicker and denser compared to other poor tea. I hope you will enjoy Lao Cha Tou. Do let me know your experience of drinking Lao Cha Tou in the comments. With that, let's move on to today's main topic. Topics covered in today's video include first, Dao and Xu, second, Lian Xu He Dao, third, practice of Lian Xu He Dao, fourth, key principle of Lian Xu He Dao, fifth, misperception, sixth, takeaways. So, Without any further ado, let's get started. Topic 1 Dao and Xu Dao is a Chinese philosophical term that reflects the fundamental concept of the origin of the world. Lao Zi, the founder of Daoism, mentioned in the 25th chapters of his work Dao De Jing, quote, Yu Wu Hun Cheng, Xian Tian Di Sheng, Translation There was something undefined and complete, coming into existence before heaven and earth. How still it was and formless, standing alone and undergoing no change, reaching everywhere and in no danger of being exhausted. It may be regarded as the mother of all things. I do not know its name, and I gave it the destination of the Tao. Making an effort further to give it a name, I call it the Great. In the translation. Other philosophers such as Zhuangzi also followed the same approach and understanding as Laozi in explaining the concept of Dao. Now, I'd like to introduce another term, Dao Ti. Dao means Dao. Ti means body, nature, or essence. Put together, Dao Ti means the nature of Dao. Or the principle of Tao. So, what is Tao Ti? Well, the principle and the nature of Tao is Wu or non existence or emptiness. The Tao is beyond any form, beyond any image. So, a popular term to describe Tao Ti is Xu Wu. Xu means emptiness. Wu means non existence. In other words, Dao Ti Xu Wu, or the nature of a Dao is emptiness and non existence. But Dao is timeless, formless, and omnipresent. It is the driving force in the universe, the origin of the universe, and the cause of any and all development in the universe. It is worth noting that in religious Taoism, Tao transforms to the Divine Spirit or God. It is the combination of emptiness but with Divine Power. It becomes energy or Qi when it spreads or scatters, while it becomes the Divine Spirit or God when gathering together. So, the three key gods in religious Taoism are the exemplifications of Tao. In religious Taoism, when one achieves the great Tao, one becomes a god. So, 
cultivation of Tao is the path to becoming a divine power. Anyone that becomes a divine power through cultivation is called Xian or Immortal. So, immortality is achieved through the cultivation of Tao, according to religious Taoism. Again, while I only practice philosophical Taoism, I do respect religious Taoism as well. I have mentioned many times in prior videos that Taoism has had the most profound impact and influence on Chinese culture and civilization. Especially in art, the Taoist concept is the foundation of Chinese aesthetics. To understand Chinese culture, you have to understand Taoism, and uh, understanding the concept of the Xu or emptiness is the key to understanding Taoism. To summarize, Tao and Xu are closely related. The nature of Tao is Xu or emptiness. In other words, emptiness is the principle of Tao. They are interchangeable by nature. So, how do Xiu Dao practitioners apply this concept in practice? That brings us to the next topic. Topic 2 Lian Xu He Dao. I have introduced three steps of Xiu Dao practice in prior videos, including Lian Jing Hua Qi, Lian Qi Hua Shen, and Lian Shen Huan Xu. Translation Refine essence to into energy. Refine energy into spirit. Refine spirit into emptiness. End the translation. So, what comes next? Well, the next step is the Lian Xu He Dao. Lian means refine or cultivate. Xu means emptiness. He means mergers. Dao means the great Dao. Put it together, it means to refine the emptiness and merge it with the Tao. It is considered the final step of a Xiu Dao practice, the ultimate goal of Taoist cultivation. Before going forward, let me show you some ancient illustrations from some Xiu Dao documents. We can see that there are some human images emerging out of the top of the head. The multiple human images overhead represents spirit out of the human body, which is the typical imagery of Lian Xu He Dao. The third step of Xiu Dao, Lian Shen Huan Xu, or refined spirit into emptiness, emphasizes the importance of the concept of emptiness. However, ancient Taoist practitioners also believed that even when we enter the state of emptiness with zhi zhuo xin or attitudes of achievement, clinging, or grasping, the practitioner continues to be in the state of action, not in the state of non-action. So, to merge with the Great Tao, cultivating the emptiness becomes an important step in practice. This is a very important concept in Taoist practice. In Taoist history, Lian Xu He Dao has been emphasized for about 2000 years. It has become the dominant principle for almost all Taoist schools from the Ming Dynasty onwards, more than 600 years ago. Other terms that express the same concept have been used as well, including Da Po Xu Kong, or Break the Emptiness, among others. All these terms express the same principle. Any Xiu Dao practice at the most advanced level should transcend oneself, both physically and spiritually, by 
getting rid of 执着心 or having any attitude of achievement, clinging or grasping, which has been briefly explained previously. Some other important Xiu Dao documents, like Xing Ming Gui Zhi, says, "Quote: Da Dao, 乃虚空之母，虚空乃天地之父母，天地乃人目之父母。End quote. Translation: The Great Dao is the parent of emptiness. Emptiness is the parent of the." Universe, the universe is the parent of all living things. End translation. So to apply this concept, Xing Ming Gui Zhi also says, "Quote: 只知炼精化气，炼气化神，炼神还虚而止，竟移了虚神合道一段。End quote. Translation." It is incorrect if you only know the practice of refining the essence into energy, refining the energy into spirit, and refine the spirit to emptiness. But forget the practice of refining the emptiness and merging with the Tao. End translation. All of these discussions emphasize the importance of this step of the. Practice. To summarize, 练虚合道 is the ultimate step in 修道 practice. 修道 practitioners should pay attention to this aspect to reach a more advanced level in pursuing the Great Tao. Topic three: Practice of 练虚合道 Lian Xu He Dao is a very advanced and abstract concept. Let's take a look at it from a different perspective. First, let me introduce the term Yang Shen or Yang Spirit. Yang Shen is a very popular term used in ancient Xiu Dao documents. Yang means Yang, the opposite of Yin. Shen means Spirit. Yang Shen is a term used to describe. Some special energy functions after reaching an advanced state of practice. It is gathered energy with human characteristics at an energetic level. This spiritual energy can transcend the physical body and have spiritual and energetic functions beyond the physical and the mental limitations, including those of time and space. So, true Yang Shen or Yang Spirit emerging or Yang Spirit emerges out of a body is one of the objectives of a Xiu Dao practice. It is just like the illustration that I just showed in some ancient Xiu Dao books. To reach Lian Xu He Dao. Different Xiu Dao schools throughout history have used different practices, but overall, it emphasizes the concept of tranquility, physically, energetically, and spiritually. For example, Wu Liu Xianzong, an important Xiu Dao document, says, "Quote: 不着于法，不。”着于相，任何方法都不必用，也就是从有入无，无无即无，与道同体。End quote. Translation: Do not attach with any method. Do not get attached with any image. Do not apply any specific method. Enter the non-existence from existence. Make non-existence disappear, and merge with the Great Tao. End translation. So, to merge with the Great Tao, the practitioner has to follow many specific practices according to Xiu Dao practice. But focusing on the concept of Jing or tranquility 
is the key practice. Paying attention to this term, understanding this term, and maintaining a tranquil state of being is the starting point of Lian Xu He Dao. It is worth noting that in both religious and philosophical Taoism practices, Lian Xu He Dao has a similar approach but with different meanings. For example, religious Taoist schools focus on the divine function of Xu and Dao, while philosophical Taoist schools focus on the perfection of an individual's practice through energetic and spiritual experiences. I have to say that both approaches are correct depending on your chosen objectives. Topic 4 Key Principle of Lian Xu He Dao Lian Xu He Dao, a key step to reaching the most advanced state of Xiu Dao practice, reflects the fundamental concept of the Taoism system. It is not only a concept, but more importantly, a stage of practice an optimal level of Xiu Dao cultivation, and a step to achieve many more advanced spiritual and energetic functions. However, even though there are many specific principles to follow in order to reach Lian Xu He Dao, following the fundamental Taoist concept of Jing or Tranquility is still the most important guiding principle to start and end with. So, the question here becomes how to reach tranquility which is the prerequisite of Lian Xu He Dao. By the way, in the old days, Lian Xu He Dao was considered a qi qiao zhi fa. Qi means to get rid of, qiao means shell, which indicates the human body. Zhi means off and fa means method. Put together, qi xiao zhi fa is the method of getting rid of the shell or the human body. In other words, qi xiao zhi fa means a solution to transcend the human body. It indicates the importance of that type of practice in Xiu Dao. So, stabilizing your energy, letting your prenatal energy take over your postnatal energy in your body, letting Xuan Guan or Mystery Gate emerge, and finally letting your prenatal spirit play its role, all are important principles to reaching tranquility. At this stage, how to maintain tranquility or Jing is the key aspect. Make sure to focus on Jing and work on it. Remember, a very abstract concept requires a specific principle in order to fully understand it without making any major mistakes, or else your practice will not progress to a new stage, which has been a common occurrence not only throughout history but also in modern times. Now, let's clarify a common misperception in the next topic. Topic 5 Misperception A very abstract concept is often misperceived by many practitioners. Lian Xu He Dao as the ultimate objective can also have many misperceptions. A very common one among those is to reach the Lian Xu He Dao stage. You have to be religious in getting your yang shen or yang spirit out of your body so that the Taoist God will help you reach it. As I mentioned previously, religious Taoist practitioners at this stage would depend on the divine power to reach that level. So, many religious rituals are usually applied to accelerate progress. Unfortunately, it already violates the fundamental principle of Taoism, which is following 
the natural way in practice. So, any intent of borrowing support or assistance beyond oneself is the postnatal approach, which should be avoided in practice. As for philosophical Taoist practitioners, very often people try to combine some religious approach in dealing with this stage of practice, which is the wrong approach. The reason is the same as stated previously. Therefore, maintaining a normal and natural approach and attitude in dealing with advanced practice is the way to follow the Tao's principle. That is the key aspect that should not be forgotten. That was just one of the common misperceptions you should avoid in your practice. Of course, there are many others that I will save for the future. Topic 6 Takeaways Some important topics have been covered in this video. First, Tao and Xu are closely related. The nature of Tao is Xu or emptiness. Emptiness is the principle of Tao. Second, Lian Xu He Dao is the ultimate step in Xiu Dao practice after Lian Jing Hua Qi, Lian Qi Hua Shen, and Lian Shen Huan Xu. Third, Jing or tranquility is the key practice for Lian Xu He Dao. Fourth, Lian Xu He Dao is the Qi Qiao Zhi Fa, which means a solution to transcend the human body. Fifth, stabilizing your energy, letting the prenatal energy take over your postnatal energy in your body, letting Xuan Guan or Mystery Gate emerge, and uh, finally, letting your prenatal spirit play its role are all the important principles to reaching tranquility. Sixth, a common misperception is to reach the Lian Xu He Dao stage. You have to be religious in getting your Yang Shen or Yang spirit off the body so that the Taoist God will help you reach it. Remember, this is the misperception, something to be avoided in your practice. That concludes today's video. Thank you for watching, see you next time, and enjoy your practice.